I found another duplex and in this video I'm gonna break down all of my numbers from how I got the ARV to the rehab budget to decide how much I could pay for the deal and I'm gonna give you guys a walkthrough before I close on it tomorrow morning let's get into it What's up guys and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lily, and this is where I document my real estate investing journey and bring you guys along with me. And today I'm gonna be doing just that. This video is episode number nine in my first time flipper series where I'm documenting my shift from wholesaling real estate and passing deals off to other investors to actually becoming the investor myself and keeping them to renovate and use the Burr strategy on. If you haven't seen any of these other eight videos, I will link them in the description for you to go back and watch later but in today's video I want to give you guys a recap on some of the deals that we've already finished I've got some before and after pictures for you and then I also want to talk about the deal that I'm closing tomorrow on another duplex I figured that while I'm going through the numbers again and making sure I'm really confident in my plan I can show you guys what it looks like to find the ARV of a property and then I've also got some footage from when I did due diligence on the property walking through and talking about what the rehab budget would be so I'll show you guys that as well you guys know that my aim is to make this the most helpful real estate investing channel on YouTube. And if you feel like I'm on the right path, the best way to let me know is to change the color of the like button. I would truly appreciate it. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. It's the best way to support the channel. With that said, let's dive into the before pictures of one of the first projects that I decided to keep for myself rather than wholesale to someone else. So this project right here was very intimidating it's a very big duplex over 5,000 square feet but as you can see the outside is very dated you can also see that there's like a hole in uh the roof that that was patched right here and honestly the inside didn't look much better very very dated there wasn't even there was this tile in the kitchen and there was no floor in the living room um, it was just concrete um old countertops old cabinets etc etc but um, I'm really happy with how this project came out. We purchased it for $217,500, and this was the first deal that I used a hard money loan on. So I've got a, actually a video coming for you guys where I interviewed my hard money lender who gave me the loan for this deal. Um, but it was $217,500 purchase price, and here are some of the after pictures. As you can see, let's, uh, let's show you guys. If I go back over here and show you the living room before and after, you can see we painted the, just about everything, but new floors, fresh paint, new light fixtures, and uh, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. We also put granite countertops in the bathrooms and in the kitchen. We put in a new stair banister in addition to all the new flooring throughout. No more carpet in this house. Uh, the carpet was, I don't even want to tell you guys about the carpet, it was really bad. And then brand new kitchen as well. So this property, like I said, we bought it for $217,500. It appraised for $355,000 after we did the rehab, which meant that I was able to get back even after paying for all of the interest on the hard money loan and all the holding costs and the rehab budget, I was able to pull back out all of the money that I put into the deal, making this a perfect burr. If you want to know more about how the burr strategy works and what a perfect burr looks like, I will link this video in the description below because that will give you all of the numbers you need as a breakdown of how this works. So this was one deal that I was super happy with. Um, how it came out. So another project that you guys probably remember seeing some information on was this one where the seller of this property had a, uh, not a real estate agent, had a contractor who was like, not halfway through, but maybe like a third of the way through renovating this house and just completely disappeared on him. Um, and that's part of the reason why he was so fed up and done with it and we got it at a really good price. So as you can see, there's a lot of materials laying around, like the walls are drywalled, but not, or they're mudded and taped, but not sanded. Um, yeah, so this house was, not in bad, bad shape at first glance, but a lot of things had to be redone. If you haven't seen, if these are the eight videos, I believe there should be one right around here, like episode three, where we had to undo a lot of these things because like this tile was put in incorrectly. 
Um, there was just a lot of stuff that needed to be fixed in this house. There's me and my dad standing out front of it. And the backyard was a complete and total mess. So this is actually a two unit property as well. Um, this right here is what we converted into a detached apartment, but this backyard was really, really bad. There's another look at the backyard to that back apartment. So to come look at the current pictures or the after pictures, so we restained the floors, new light fixtures, paint. Um, we put tile in the kitchen floor, painted the kitchen cabinets, um, new tile in the showers and on the floor. So that looks really good. This is one of my favorite pictures. I love this mirror that we were able to put in there. That was a really big uh, thing that a lot of tenants really liked. That's the other bathroom. Here's a shot of the kitchen. And then, as you can see, this is what we did with the backyard. So no more of that overgrown, disgusting mess. We put new siding, new roof, new door, everything on that back property. And that also rents out for $400 a month. The front house rents out for $1,600 a month. And so yeah, this is the, the garage apartment. It has a little mini kitchen, has a, a full bathroom, lots of windows. Um, a full tiled shower in the bathroom and that's the front house and then look at this lovely picture of the back house okay so we purchased it for 90,000 and we put in about I believe 65,000 and it appraised for 205 which also qualified as a perfect burr we were able to get everything back that we put in um, I did not use a hard money loan on this one I used a private money loan and if you're not sure what the difference between those are definitely go check out episode two of this series where I talk about all the different funding options I've been using to secure and renovate these properties so that's a quick update for you guys on how some of the other projects have gone and now let's look at the property that I'll be closing on tomorrow morning. This is it. At first glance, looks like a kind of normal looking house. There aren't a ton of pictures on the listing, um, but the story of how I found this property is pretty interesting. As you could tell, it's a little bit distressed, and if you were to go inside, you would definitely smell it. Um, but this property I found because it actually came on the market and went under contract the very same day about now about two months ago and I didn't see it then but I got an alert on my phone that a property where the description said it was for sale as is had come back on the market and this is one reason that I recommend anybody who's interested in wholesaling investing whatever it is that you have automatic alerts set up either through Redfin or Zillow or both because I would have never known this property was back on the market if I didn't get that automatic alert and I don't think a lot of people knew it was back on the market because the first time it came on the market it got so many offers like I said it went under contract the very same day um, according to the real estate agent, take everything with a grain of salt, but according to the real estate agent, the person who got the deal was a new investor and they kind of bid up the price to win it. They paid a little bit more than they ended up being comfortable with and they ended up backing out of the deal. So when it came back on the market, I was the only person to look at it before I was able to put my offer in, which was a little bit below the listing price, but because the sellers had already gone through the process of someone going in and backing out, and I assured them that, hey, if I get it for this price, I will not back out, I will close, um, that was able to give me a little bit of a, a discount on the listing price and get a deal that nobody else really knew was back on the market. So automatic alerts are definitely your friend. Another great thing about this property that's kind of like a hidden gem is that it had a detached garage that the previous owner kind of converted into being a part of the house. So the walkway between the garage and the house, they enclosed that and they turned the garage into an actual family room. That space is big enough that we're going to convert that into a second unit, making this a duplex, which is gonna be super exciting. I will show you guys that when I show you the footage from the um, property walkthrough. But for now, let's take a look at what the comps around this property look like, what it might sell for and how I got an idea of what to pay for it. So first thing first, whenever you're looking at a property and you are looking for comps, the thing you want to remember is that you're looking for similar homes that have already been updated. And that means I want to look at other homes that are similar in style, size, bedroom, bathroom, makeup to this house, but that have already been updated so I can get an idea of what the ARV or after repair value might be for my house once I do that renovation. Um, and when I'm talking about similar, 
That can mean bedroom, bathroom, that can mean size, that can mean style. It's kind of a, a combination of all three, however you feel it, right? So it's not like a rule of thumb that if a house is 200 square feet bigger, it's okay to use it as a comp, but if it's 201 square feet bigger, it's not, right? You have to get a, a, a feel for it. And running comps is something that takes practice. And for every student that I work with, it's something that I tell them to do over and over and over again, that I give them practice problems to do because the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. And honestly, every time I do a deal, I run my comps on it over and over and over again just to see if I'm getting the same number at the end so I have more confidence in the deal itself. And another thing to look for is things that just don't make sense. So for example, here's our property right here. It's 1,964 square feet. And I've got one here that's 1,165. Well, before I say that, it's 1,964 square feet. It's also a three bedroom, 1.5 bathroom. This is a three bedroom, 1.5 bathroom, but it's 800 square feet smaller. This one's a three bedroom, one bathroom, still smaller. This one's a three bedroom, one bathroom, a lot smaller. This one's a three bedroom, 1.5 bathroom, a lot smaller. So the first thing that st stood out to me about this property was it's so much bigger than all of the comps. Is there room to either add an extra bedroom or an extra bathroom and take up the value that way? Or is there room to use that extra square footage to make a separate unit, which is what we're gonna end up doing. And I'll show you guys that during the property walkthrough. But it's always good to pay attention to the things that don't make sense. Like the sizes of all these other houses are kind of clumped together and then mine is an outlier. Where is that extra space? Where's that extra space coming from? And I'll show you guys one other thing, which is even before I went to see the house, how you can find out if there's like where, what the floor plan looks like, where the extra space might be. So every county should have a county assessor's website. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to my county assessor's website to look up this property and see if they have a copy of what the floor plan is. So when I look at the floor plan that the county assessors provides, you can see how this is the front porch where we, talk, where we showed you the front of the house, this is the house itself. And then this used to be the detached garage, but you can see that they've connected it through this hallway and put this space. So the original house ended right here and was a lot smaller, but the extra square footage is coming from this back area and this walkway, which is where we're gonna make the cutoff to add the garage apartment. So if there are things like that that don't, don't don't make sense like why is this house so big but it still only has three bedroom one and a half bathroom then you want to just dig a little deeper to find out why now looking at some of our comps remember I want to look for similar homes that have already been updated and I can tell that these are wood floors fresh paint nice light fixtures right looks like a nice kitchen we've got a farm sink stainless steel cabinets New appliances, or not stainless steel cabinet, stainless steel appliances. All right, so this is a property that's gonna be similar in size um, to my front house and similar in style, but has already been updated. And so I can look at the price per square foot that this property sold for and the price that it sold for and start to get an idea of the numbers that my property might get. Here's another one that sold for $255,000 and $168 a square foot, and I can Go through and see that this one's also already been updated. Wood floors, white walls, stainless steel appliances. You're probably seeing a theme here. And I can look at this and start to use those numbers around 168, 169 as um, numbers that might be similar to what my property will be worth once I do the renovation. Okay, we got the same thing, probably seeing a theme here in the types of renovations that are being done in this area. And not only will these comps help me with getting my ARV or my after repair value, but they're also gonna help me with getting my rehab budget together because I need, I know that I need to refinish the wood floors, I need to paint, and I can see what type of, let's say countertops, for example, are in the kitchens of all of my comps because that's gonna tell me what type of countertops to put in. These are all stone countertops with stainless steel appliances. So if I went in and put in fake Formica countertops with, um, you know, white appliances, then my property would not get the same value as these ones. That's also how you start to think about what type of rehab do I need to be doing. And this one also sold for 168 a square foot. This one sold for, let's see, 169 a square foot. Did we look at this one? This one sold for 190 a square foot, right? So this one is still three bedroom, 1.5 bathroom, but it sold for a lot more. And 
it sold just two days ago. So this actually isn't a comp that I had when I put the offer in to purchase this property. I thought this property would sell for about the 163, 169 that all my other comps are, but it seems like the market is actually still going up because this comp that's now the most recent one sold for 190 a square foot. So when I comp this pro property, I actually did it at about the 169 mark, um, but it looks like we might even get a little bit extra in there. Am I just gonna change my entire plan now no if I'm I mean if I get a higher number on my ARV because the market is going up then great if this was lower and I saw that the market was going down well then I might need to try to work my rehab budget to account for the lower ARV that I might get but in this case I think this might just be icing on top my goal for this property is for it to appraise around 255,000 and to kind of put that in perspective what I'm looking for Let's say I take that 255 that I'm looking for, right? That's the 255,000 that I want my property to appraise for, and I divide it by the amount of square feet that I have, which is 1964. Then I only need this property to appraise for just over $129 per square foot. And we can see that that is being super conservative because my comps sold for 163, 168, 160 nine, et cetera, et cetera. So being very conservative, but still trying to hit at a price point that's similar to what our comp sold for. Now, once I went under contract to buy this property, and I'll tell you what I got it for in a moment, I did have the opportunity to spend about seven days doing due diligence, meaning getting other people's eyes on this deal. So I talked about in this TikTok how I use my lender, who is gonna you know, give me the money for this deal, to vet my ARV numbers. I also have a local property manager who will run ARV for you and give you a full report for $5. So I spent the $5 on that, money well spent. Um, so if you want more, just small tips like that that maybe won't make up a whole video, definitely go follow me on TikTok as well. But for now, let's throw it to Lily of the past to show you guys what a day of due diligence with my contractors looks like to get our rehab budget together and to give you a tour of the property. Right, guys so we're here contract is about to start coming through for the due diligence in a moment it's a little bit loud because we are on this main road i'll talk about that in a moment but let's go inside and get a tour all right so we're about to go in um i'm putting on my mask not because there's anyone in here because the smell is not pleasant <laughs> All right, so this is the entryway, kind of like the living room slash dining room nook. Basically, this house smells of pet pee and cigarette smoke. So that means that everything is gonna have to be professionally treated um, and covered up with like smell blocking primer called Kills to get the smell out. And there's even some places in the flooring, I'll show you guys in a little while, that is gonna have to get completely replaced because it's just completely damaged by pet urine. So this way is the kitchen. This way, most of the bedrooms. Let's go this way first. So right here, we've got a hall closet. Right here, we've got what is gonna be the master bedroom. Another closet. Front bedroom, Pepto-Bismol pink. This house, we're gonna be doing all new windows all new trim, all new doors and door trim, as well as baseboard trim. So the walls will get, like I said, cleaned of all of the nicotine. They'll get covered in kills, which blocks the smell. They'll get any damage repaired and then painted. So it'll look brand new. Over here, we've got the one full bathroom right now. And another small back bedroom which needs quite a bit of love and coming out we're back in the living room
And here's the kitchen. And then this, it's kind of like a little eating area, but it's, it's wasted space. And right now we don't have a pantry in the kitchen. And if you come this way and look out, we want to get rid of this wall to kind of open up the kitchen to have a little bit more light and be a little bit more connected with the living room. And right now this is where our fridge is supposed to go. So we're gonna get our floor plan designer out here to just give us some ideas of how we can better use this space to open up the wall, get the pantry and fridge repositioned. But then also, right now, this is the pantry and the hot water heater, as well as a half bathroom. So we need to move this, make this a full bathroom, so that we'll have a true three bedroom, two full bathroom house. Cause right now it's three bedrooms, 1.5. But to get the ARV we want, we wanna get that up to three bedroom, two full. Okay, so then the other cool thing about this house is you've seen where we're gonna have three bedrooms, two bathrooms, but we also have some extra space. So this used to not be here. This was a detached garage and they built this kind of mudroom area to enclose the connection between the main house and the garage. And then they also changed this from being a garage to being like a family room. So come on. I'm looking around a little bit because I have seen mice in here, but um, this room looks horrible now. But this is gonna become like an extra bonus apartment where we're gonna get a small kitchenette and an, uh, a half or a full bathroom in here somewhere between this space and the mudroom space. We're also gonna take all of the drywall from the ceiling and we're gonna have it vaulted just straight to the roof line to make this space feel a lot bigger. All of the wood paneling, all of the drywall, all of the doors, everything in here is gonna go. But just having this converted garage space, it's already been converted. We're just gonna use it a little bit better and make this like a whole bonus apartment. Back to the present. Let's talk about what all of that work that you just saw that needs to be done is going to cost. Of course, after doing a few of these renovations where I've got a main house and a garage apartment, I have a bit of an understanding of what a job like that will cost, but I didn't at the beginning. And so if you're a beginner watching this, one of the best things you can do is pay a general contractor to walk through a property with you and help you get an idea for the rehab budget. You don't have to lie to them that you're gonna be able to give them the job if you get the deal. You don't have to tell them like an act like you're more experienced than you are, just say, hey, I'm new. I would love to pay you for some of your time so I can start to learn this process and hopefully build a relationship with you. And I think that would take you very, very far and teach you a lot. For this property, we're aiming for a $75,000, $80,000 max renovation budget. Budget? We're aiming for a $75,000 to $80,000 maximum renovation budget. And now that we have our ARV number of 255,000, 80,000 renovation budget max, let me show you guys how I would run the numbers backwards off of those estimates to get my maximum purchase price. So open up my calculator. I'll record this for you guys. All right, so I've got 255,000, which I think will be the ARV or after repair value of what this property is worth once we're done with the renovation. And I multiply that by 80%. Why do I multiply by 80%? Because I'm gonna burr this property, which means I'm gonna buy it, renovate it, then refinance. And I'm gonna do something called a cash out refinance. And I know that my lender will give me 80% of the ARV back in cash. So I know that once I'm finished with this deal, I can get 255,000 times 80% back um, as in my cash out refinance. So 255 times 80% is $204,000. So I know I can get that back. So I need to be able to purchase it and renovate it for less than $204,000 so I can get all of my money back. 
So if I renovate it for $80,000, that would mean that my maximum purchase price would be $124,000. Because remember, $124,000 plus $80,000 will put me right on the button at that 80% of ARV to get all of my money back. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, go check out this video where I talk more about the Burr method. So now I know my maximum purchase price is 124,000, but I did not offer $124,000 for this deal because it was actually listed on market for $125,000. So I could have just offered $1,000 less than the listing price and still been able to hopefully execute a perfect Burr, but that's with very tight margins. That's being sure that I'm gonna get that 255 and being sure that I can stay under $80,000 purchase price. So I do wanna give myself as much wiggle room as I can for something to go wrong. But also, this property had already gone under contract and come back on the market, and I was the only person looking at it at that point, which gave me a little bit of leverage with the sellers, and so I offered them $10,000 less than their listing price, $115,000, and they accepted it right off the bat, which kind of makes me think I should have offered a little bit less so that they would at least negotiate, but they're happy, I'm happy, I've got a deal for $115,000, which is gonna give me a little bit of wiggle room, both with my rehab budget and my ARV, to hopefully still hit another perfect burr. If you enjoyed this video, you will definitely enjoy the other eight videos in this series, as well as my TikTok and Instagram content. So before you leave, don't forget to change the color of the like button, go check out that other stuff, and as always, thank you for watching.